Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name is Acacia. Today we're going to be doing my mid-month wrap-up. I have seven books here. I think three, three, eight. I have eight books here. Um, so we're going to go in order of least to most enjoyed. But in this scenario, I enjoyed all of them over three stars. And I would recommend all of these um, in some format or another. I think for this, though, I would say it depends on who you are and what you like. Um, a lot of these are very specific to certain people um, rather than overall everybody would love these so let's dive in the first one I have coming in at last is Growing Things by Paul Tremblay I love Paul Tremblay so I was really disappointed that this didn't come in as high as I wanted it to um, it's a fine short story collection for me I just didn't love all of them enough to actually give it even four stars I felt that some of these were a little dull and didn't really give any oomph and that was just a really annoying thing. I didn't really find the scariness aspect in all of them. I didn't really love all of them and I just wasn't as enthralled and enamored with this as I usually am with Paul Tremblay's work. So there's that. Then this was sent to me by a subscriber and a Patreon, so thank you so much for that. I really appreciated it. This was a great read. This is Where the Crawdads Sing by Della Owens. Um, this one is interesting. So a young girl named Kaya is left by her family and ends up kind of raising herself. And years later, the town seems to have this issue with the Marsh girl who is Kaya. And they believe that she is witchery, dark magic kind of stuff. Um, and they feel like she's done wrong by the town. Um, and I really liked it. It talked a little bit about trauma. It talked about the idea of misinformation and wrongful conversations. Not wrongful conversations. That's not what I mean. Wrongful accusations there we go um yeah so I really liked it um it says perfect for Barbara King Solver and Karen Russell readers um I would not compare this to Karen Russell I might compare it to Barbara King Solver possibly because of the uh, descriptions but I would not compare this to Karen Russell. It's not in the same vein of magical realism that I expect from Karen Russell. Um, if they're talking about the lyricalness of the writing, I would still not compare it to Karen Russell. She has a very specific style that I feel is almost uncomparable. So if you're looking at this and thinking that it might be a Karen Russell kind of filler it's not but it, it's a good book it's solid and I enjoyed it and I would definitely read it again so I'm glad to have that on my shelf next we have this this is Devil Wears Prada it's a repurchase and a reread for me this is by Lauren Weisberg um this one talks about Andrea um she goes to work for the editor and chief of Runway, I think is what they call it. Yeah, Runway Magazine. Um, and she works for Miranda Priestly. If you've seen the movie, you've got the general gist of it. Um, but I did like this. I don't know if I like this better than the movie. I really loved looking at the fashion and stuff. But hearing about it is really nice too. So I enjoyed reading this. I definitely like that world of the high fashion kind of high high maintenance world I'm I'm kind of all about that um which you know if I was a hundred pounds skinnier would probably show but I'm not a hundred pounds skinnier so I can't afford that kind of stuff um no I can't fit in that kind of stuff but anyway um I really enjoy this book I I definitely would recommend it it was a good palette cleanser. I just kind of read it between things. I just needed something light. I really wasn't in a headspace to read anything dark for a minute there and this just did exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, if you're in the mood for something light and airy and really kind of 
basic, this is really good. It's not beautifully written. It's not excellently executed. It's not perfect. It's just a really fun, quick, easy read. Then I read Practical Magic as a reread. I had forgotten that this was set in the summer versus in the fall. So I had kind of gone into it thinking, oh, I'm going to have a nice fall read. And it's a summer read, but it's not a summer read because it's about witches. So it's a really mixed bag. Um, this is about the Owen sisters and the Owens have a curse on them that if they fall in love with a man, he will die. Um, and this follows Jillian and Sally as they are children. Um, if you've seen the movie, it's a little different from the movie. Um, and there's aspects of it that are, are more, um, more dark, I should say. Um, but also a little more, um, A little less magical in terms of like the witchiness and a little more sort of trying to live in everyday life. This one in general I just really enjoy. I love this book. It was a reread for me. I, I really had forgotten that it was written in the summer though. Um, but I'm glad I reread it and now I'm in the mood for witches books but I just ordered the Furies from the UK rather than buy it in the US because I like the US because I like the UK cover better, so I have to wait for that, and it's probably not going to show up until after October. But what are we going to do about it? We're just going to wait. Just going to wait. Um, this is... Does this have a nice... What's going on here? Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, this is a nonfiction read. This is The Five, The Untold Lives of the Women Killed by Jack the Ripper by Haley. Rubenhold, Rubenhold. Um, I enjoyed this. I really did. It talks about the victims. It gives them a voice and a name and a place and an identity and it's really good. Um, I liked it a lot and I feel very strongly that this is a pretty good crime fiction, not, not crime fiction, pretty good true crime nonfiction. Um, if you're interested in the Jack the Murder Ripper story, this is something that's a necessary to read because you're missing information if you haven't read this yet. There's <coughs> there's rumors and lies that have been told about Jack the Ripper, like that he only killed prostitutes. That's not true. Um, it's a more fun story to kind of base off of, but it's not the actual fact. This dives into the women and their lives and their their names and faces and all that. And it was just, you know, it was just a good book. And I, I'm really happy I read it. I was going to read it in nonfiction November, but I was just too excited. Um, yeah, I really liked it. I really liked it. And I would definitely recommend it. This book didn't make it to the number one spot only because there are two books that I reread that I just love so much that it's hard to put them out of their spot. But I really enjoyed this. This is The Imaginary Friend by Stephen Chbosky. Um, This took me two, three days to read. It was a good chunkster of a book and it got me kind of going through the motions. Um, I really enjoyed it. I read it when I was awake during the day. I tried to read it at night and it didn't work. It got me too freaked out. Um... I don't usually read at night anyway because my partner is here so I usually read during the day and keep myself occupied but I'm home alone when it happens so mm, nice and creepy um but I enjoyed this I really loved it I thought it was great I really like Stephen Chbosky's writing I'm glad I finally read something else by him and I can say that um because Perks of Being a Wallflower um was just so good and I love that book but I wasn't sure if like he was going to be able to keep the momentum of that kind of good writing going and he did I think he did um and I really enjoyed this book and I definitely would recommend it so it follows a young boy named Christopher and his mother Kate and Christopher is, this is heavy, so I'm going to put it down. Um, 
Christopher gets into some trouble with the woods and the darkness and uh, some evil and uh, his mother is trying to save him and protect him and it's just really creepy and weird. Um, I would definitely say that if you're a religious person this might be a little too much for you because there's definitely elements of hell brought up in this that if you're uncomfortable with that terminology and world this could be a little terrifying for you. So just be aware of that and don't dive into it thinking that it's going to be a quick horror that's just basic. It's it's pretty <clears throat> good and evil based and um, it definitely has some elements that are terrifying. Then I reread Fingersmith. I think I read this earlier this year already. I just I needed to read it again. I love this book. I'll m link my uh, review up in the cards. It's Sarah Waters. It's great. If you haven't read it, you should. And then the last book I read my favorite of the month was The Haunting on Hill House by Shirley Jackson. I love this book and this time I read it in paper format instead of what I did last year which was in audiobook. Um, I do have this on audio from Libro FM and I like the uh, narrator. I really enjoy her. She's narrated three of the Shirley Jackson books that I have read. So she's narrated uh, this one, We Have Always Lived in a Castle, and then also the biography about Shirley Jackson. So I really enjoy her and she's kind of on that Shirley Jackson wavelength now. Like I literally just associate her with Shirley Jackson. So um, if you're interested, you can definitely check those out and I'll link Libro FM in the description. Um, but this one is about, oh my goodness, what's her name? What's her name? Uh, Eleanor. There we go. I wanted to call her Eleanor. Eleanor is not a name. Um, this is Eleanor. And uh, she gets a letter from a doctor who says, come to this house and stay here for the summer. And she does. And uh, it turns out that there are terrible things that have happened in that house. And weird, creepy goings on will begin to happen. And it's just super weird and creepy and just a lot of fun to read. I love it. I gave it five stars this time instead of four. Um, I would highly recommend it. And I would definitely say that if you like Charlie Jackson, it's great. If you want to start with Charlie Jackson, this is a really nice place to start. I actually prefer starting with that to the lottery. Um, the lottery is even more terrifying than that. I think. I mean, it depends what you're terrified by. I'm terrified by humans and their interactions. If you're terrified by ghosts, that one's going to be scarier. So just an FYI. All right. So those are all the books that I have read so far in the month of October. I will talk to you in my next video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, click that subscribe button down below. I post videos every Tuesday and Thursday. If you're not seeing my videos, go ahead and click the notification bell down in the corner. Um, I haven't been seeing videos of people I subscribe to lately. I've been missing them and I'm very disappointed. So just click that bell and you'll be notified when I post. Um, <coughs> I want to say thank you to my Patreons and thank you to my subscribers. I love you all greatly. I will talk to you in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.